Hello, my name is Ben Shabby. I'm a graduate student at The Ohio State University, and I'm here to discuss my recent paper entitled No Strip Hydrogen in the Nebular Phase Spectra of the nearby Type 1A Supernova 2011 FE. In this paper, Chris Denick, Vic Pogge, Pingardovich, and I report on the deepest limit yet obtained on the H alpha emission in the nebular phase spectrum of a Type 1A supernova. To place this limit, we use a high signal noise spectrum of 2011 FE taken 274 days after maximum viewing of light, obtained with the first of the mod spectrographs at LBT. Behind me, you can see the second of the mod spectrographs, which is currently under construction here at the Ohio State Department of Astronomy Instrument Laboratory. Type 1A supernovae are among the most luminous explosive events known and are observable from halfway across the universe. However, even though Type 1A supernovae have been crucial in shaping our understanding of the universe, the exact nature of the progenitor system remains a mystery. While it is commonly accepted that Type 1A supernovae result from the thermonuclear explosion of a carbon-oxygen white dwarf in a close binary system, the exact nature of the binary companion and of the chain of events leading to the supernova explosion are still uncertain. A popular model for the progenitor system, known as the single genetic scenario, is illustrated here. This scenario has a carbon-oxygen white dwarf accreting material from a solar-like main sequence companion until the white dwarf reaches a critical mass when it explodes as a type 1A supernova. The supernova ejecta will then impact the companion, which is shown in this cartoon. A generic prediction of the single degenerate model is that a significant amount of material will be stripped from the donor star by this impact approximately one-sixth of the solar mass for a main sequence donor. This material, excited by gamma rays from radioactive decay, is expected to produce a relatively narrow H-alpha feature, observable once the higher velocity iron-rich ejecta becomes optically thin and the supernova enters the nebular phase. Such emission has been looked for in a handful of nearby type 1A supernovae, but has never been detected. These non-detections already place strong constraints on progenitor models. However, single degenerate models have since been proposed that are predicted to produce less strip material to avoid these constraints. It is therefore of significant interest to place even stronger constraints on other nearby Type 1A supernovae. At a mere 6.4 megaparsecs, the plain vanilla supernova 2011 FE is an ideal target for obtaining improved constraints. 2011 FE was discovered in the Pinwheel Galaxy on the 24th of August 2011, less than one day after explosion. This supernova is the nearest 1A in the past 25 years. Additionally, extensive multi-wavelength follow-up observations show that 2011 FE is only slightly reddened and is surrounded by a relatively clean environment. In our paper, we present a very high signal noise nebular phase spectrum of 2011 FE, taken 274 days after maximum B-band light. This spectrum was taken with MODS on LBT. In Figure 3, we can compare our nebular phase spectrum to the nebular phase spectra of supernovae 2005 CF and 2005 AM, on which the previous best h alpha limits were based. The rest wavelength of h alpha is indicated by the vertical red line, and the gray shows the 1000 km per second region around h alpha where hydrogen emission would be expected. As can be seen in the figure, our spectrum has a substantially higher sense of noise, which allows us to place stronger limits than previous studies. In our search for H-alpha emission, we closely follow the methods presented in Leonard 2007. We define a continuum by smoothing our spectrum on scales large compared to the expected H-alpha feature, then we subtract off this continuum and examine the residuals. In the top of our figure 4, we show the nebular phase spectrum of 2011 FE in black and the smooth continuum in red. We mark a large to lower feature with a dashed vertical gray line. The middle panel shows a model of small-scale telauric absorption features which are not corrected in our spectrum. Finally, the bottom panel shows the supernova spectrum with the smooth continuum subtracted. Unlike the Leonard 2007 study, the main uncertainty in our H-alpha limit arises from the continuum determination and the unknown H-alpha line profile rather than the photon noise of our spectrum. Thus, we place our conservative flux limit such that there is no theoretically motivated line profile that can be subtracted from our spectrum and still produce a smooth underlying continuum. The blue dashed and dotted lines in the upper panel show two such profiles subtracted from the smooth spectrum. Determining the late time H alpha emission in type 1A supernovae spectra requires difficult radiative transfer calculations that deserve additional attention and detailed modeling. However, adopting previous models, our flux limit translates into an upper limit of less than one thousandth of a solar mass of solar metal sitting material stripped from a companion by the supernova ejecta. 
Such a stringent limit poses a significant challenge to single genomic models, including more exotic variations proposed to evade previous constraints. If you'd like to know more about our work, please see our paper, which is posted on the archive. Thank you.